do you find using vellum could be, well, challenging? Adhering it, a nuisance, and, well, maybe just boring? I've got seven great ways to use vellum. Let's get crafting. My first order of business was to get some color on my vellum, and quite honestly, I wasn't sure if it was going to work. I broke out the alcohol inks because, well, they're in my stash, I don't use them very often, and, well, I figured they dried quickly, so maybe they wouldn't warp my vellum so much. So I'm going to be using the Ranger brand alcohol felt pads on a blending tool. And I'm going to start by using a full sheet of vellum. Today was all about playing, and I figured a full sheet, once again, might not warp and curl as maybe a smaller sheet would. So here we go. I am going to be using three different colors of alcohol ink. This first one is kind of a bluish green and it's called Patina and it is a Ranger brand alcohol ink. Now I'm just dabbing it onto that felt pad and well, I'm gonna tap it on, then I'm just gonna cover it all because I felt that, well, this was a really simple way to get some beautiful color into my vellum. So it's about here that I start thinking about the possibilities. The possibilities of adding more color to a single piece of vellum and potentially blending the two together. That wasn't the original intent, but when the hamster gets on that wheel, she gets a flying. So here I'm going to be adding some sunshine yellow alcohol ink. Again, it's from Ranger and I have used a new felt pad. Now, there's no point in disposing of the felt pads unless you have the luxury of doing so. I intend to just pop them into a plastic baggie with a label of what colors they are and, well, I'll use them another time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and see if I color over the patina, if it's gonna give me a different color green. And I'm liking what I'm seeing, but now I really want more. Who I'm getting bold now. I am adding a pink flamingo color. And let's see what kind of blends we can get out of this. Now, this is far from over. Um, you can see I'm starting to get a little bit of purple there, the pink and the green. Um, this is turning out really cool, but I'm not real fond of the harsh line. So we're going to fix that up. I have a little glass bottle with a dropper in it and it is filled with 91% isopropyl alcohol. That's it. And I'm just splashing it all over the vellum. I thought what a cool way to maybe make some bubbles. I want those bubbles to have the harsh edges, not necessarily the distinction between the two colors or three colors. I also wanted to use something that most everybody has in their stash. So the isopropyl alcohol was my first go. Now I do have blending solutions, so I thought I'd give that a whirl too. Let's add a little of this and see if I get anything different than what I did with the isopropyl alcohol. The blending solution seems to give the bubbles a little bit of a harsher edge, which I have to admit is kind of cool. Now let's set this aside to dry. With a fresh piece of vellum, I'm going to be starting off with blending solution and I'm giving it a good amount of blending solution in the center of my piece of vellum, once again, to keep it from curling up. And I'm going to start off with some alcohol pearls. Now this one's called Celestial. You do have to shake it up. And I have been watching a lot of Tiffany Solorio's videos and she says that the pearls don't work with regular alcohol. You got to use blending solution, so I'm going with her recommendation. I'm going to follow this up with some Purple Twilight regular alcohol ink, and I'm just splashing it on. Now, I really wanted to get these inks moving with the blending solution, so I'm using the Ranger Tim Holtz ink blower. If you don't have one, you could use a straw and just blow on the ink to make them move. So I seriously want you to consider dragging out your alcohol inks if you have any and giving it a play because this was a blast. I'm not going to lie. I had to really stop myself and say, Wendy, you have to edit your film so you can get it posted tonight. And um, I just wanted to still have fun with it. So by all means, get your supplies out 
and keep going until you get a product that you really love. Now, this one, I, I had a, a, an end in mind and I wanted it to be a little bit more opaque, but I also wanted to add this little piece of silver foil that I had lying around. I didn't completely dry all of the ink. I left some of it wet and that's what the foil is adhering to. And I'm just splatting it on and giving it a little press. And I absolutely adore that little bit of holographic silver foil that I just had lying around. It is a great way to use up product and it's gorgeous. Now this next one, I've not seen anyone do, but I'm gonna use foundry wax. Y'all, this turned out so cool. I really wanted a metallic-y type vellum, and I don't need to go out and buy more vellum. This is literally vellum that I bought at Michael's. Um, I know I can heat emboss on it. You can't apply a huge amount of heat on it because you'll ruin it, but I don't need to do anything specialty either. Now I've added a small amount of foundry wax to my glass mat and I'm using a fresh alcohol um, felt pad because you want to apply this rather thin. Uh, I know when I've used it in the past to highlight or accent die cuts or embossed card fronts, whatever, um, I just put a little on my finger and it dries very quickly. Uh, so I figured, well, an alcohol, felt pad might work and it does. It works beautifully. Now the first one that I used was sterling. So that was a little bit of a silver color. And this one's more of a copper color. This one is called mind. And um, I just got so excited doing these that I just had to try out a bunch of colors. Now foundry racks only comes in four colors. This is the third color, it's called Gilded and it's a gold color. There's also Statue, which is kind of more of a bronze color. I don't think that I'm gonna use that in this particular example, but I wanted to see the silver, the gold, and the copper. And then we're gonna do one other thing because I thought, what else do I have in my stash that I can use to get a completely different effect on vellum. Now I love the fact that I was able to use something that I already had to create something completely different and I honestly have not seen this before. Well, I was still looking for something that would give me this silvery shimmery look and well I went back to paper glitz. This one's called Sparkle and I'm peeling back the press and seal and I'm getting to the bottom of my jar down here so I'm just going to apply it directly to the felt pad and see how the vellum reacts. Now I flipped that same piece of vellum over and I'm just going to brush it on. And I can already see it's doing exactly what I want. Now the paper glitz tends to be a much heavier product and as you can see, the vellum is starting to curl and it absolutely does curl on me. So that was the negative here, but it still produces a really beautiful product. So while I'm waiting for the rest of that vellum to dry, I'm going to use some Distress Ink and some Distress Oxide Ink to see what kind of a reaction I can get on the vellum. I was looking to find out whether or not I could color vellum, but it still be rather translucent. So the first one I'm using is Distress Ink in Salvaged Patina, and that is a dye-based ink, and it is a translucent ink. So... I probably needed to re-ink that little ink cube. The ink cubes, I think, hold one-fifth the amount of ink that a three-by-three-inch ink pad holds, but all my dye inks are the little mini cubes, so I probably should have refreshed it, but I still get a pretty look. It's just subtle. So I really wanted to get a good comparison between the two types of ink. So I did choose the exact same color, Salvage Patina, in the Distress Oxide, as well as the Distress Ink. Now the oxides have a pigment in them, so they do stay wet a little longer, and they also produce a chalky finish. So I knew this one wasn't going to be as translucent, but I wanted to see if I could get some really good color onto that vellum. And now I have a side-by-side -side comparison.
take a look at how the Distress Ink and the Distress Oxide, as well as Paper Glitz, ooh, that's yummy, look against white cardstock. So there's the Sterling, the Gilded, and the um, Mind was the one in the middle. Let's get to making some cards. I'm gonna go ahead and cut down all of my panels. This one is being cut down to a standard A2 size, so it will produce four panels. The other one, well, I've gotta cut out the center because I, I really want that vibrant purple blue green uh, mixture that we have going on. So I'm just gonna cut this down and then I'm gonna go ahead and die cut that. And I'm also going to cut down off screen the other vellum with the mixture. I die cut my panel down and I also cut an additional panel in holographic silver. I'm using scrapbook.com's double sided adhesive sheets on the back of my vellum. This is one of the absolute best ways so you can't see the adhesive because that's the name of the game with vellum. You can almost always see that adhesive underneath and it's rather annoying, but with the double sided sheets, it works beautifully, especially when you put a holographic or metallic cardstock behind it. Now I've only released one edge and I'm lining it up on the back of my vellum. And once I have it lined up, then I can remove the rest of that release paper and give it a good press with my bone folder. To adhere the vellum to the metallic cardstock, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Remove part of the adhesive, line it up, once I've got it in line, I'll press it down and then go ahead and remove the rest of the release sheet. Once released, I'm gonna give it a good press with the bone folder. Next, I'll adhere that panel to my card base with some Barely Arts Precision Craft Glue. Now, if you've watched many of my videos, you will know that this is my absolute favorite glue. And I'm just going to leave a little bit of a white border. The white border plays nicely against the remaining vellum that doesn't have color. I've also cut out a white uh, holographic butterfly and added a sentiment. With leftovers, I have cut out best wishes also from that alcohol inked vellum. The next card, let's go ahead and emboss this. So this is dry embossing. This is a Sizzix uh, 3D textured impression embossing folder. I'm going to line up some white cardstock behind it and then lay it into the Bohemian Botanicals embossing folder. Now I've run this through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 and let's see the result. Oh, look at that, it's beautiful. And did you notice there's no cracking? Why? Because I put cardstock behind it. And I, this is kind of a twofer. I got an extra panel that I can use for another card. It's beautiful. I've added a gold embossed birthday wishes sentiment and allowed the vellum to be the star. I've die cut the shadow butterfly out of our foundry wax gilded color and paired that up with pattern paper. Here I've used another foundry wax covered piece of vellum to die cut the bird and used a leftover background. Here's a closer look of our alcohol ink plus foiled background. This is the first background we made called the bubble background and I've paired it up with one of my sentiments and some cute embellishments. If you liked what you saw, I've picked out some other videos just for you. Check them out here. Until next time, I'll see you real soon.